In fact, UTAG and the TUC issued a statement. In fact, they addressed the press this week. A key part of it is the demand for a state of emergency to be declared. And Mr. Banabio, he's a director of electoral services at the Electoral Commission, is going to leave us now because he's attending to another issue. But the key demand that the TUC and 17 other CSOs are making is for a state of emergency to be declared and a ban on all forms of small-scale mining. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources earlier this week made a response, in fact, he gave a response to this call by the TUC, UTAG, and the others. He has subsequently come to indicate that that statement he made was not a conclusive statement and that there will still be some form of engagement. So let's hear from the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources about the call for the state of emergency to be declared. Take a look. Declare a state of emergency that is within the bosom of the president, but I find that to be a far-reaching, um, really, uh, you know, a, a very draconian measure to take. And so we will engage them, and we will have this conversation. And I believe out of that, we may be able to come up with some consensus which we can, we can work with. So I'm reluctant to give a definitive position on this matter. I think the discussion should go on, and I think that at some stage the country um, will, will, will come to a consensus on this matter. But it's not as simple as ban small scale mining, all forms of small scale mining. I think that the, the, the replications may be a lot. I mean, as I said, and I keep repeating it, the collective action is what is required, all of us. So that um, is the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources there. I've got a number of your messages indicating a repeat of this program. In fact, that is beyond my call. So, um, and also just a 4,163 of you have sent us messages. Um, I would again apologize. I, I, I have read a few but I could still make some time. And, and Musa Abatua says, I fully align uh, with the statement advocating for the issue to prioritize the interests of Ghanaians. Thank you. Hadi from Pig Farm says, good morning, my brother. Whose interest is this for the EC chair working tirelessly to says, um, protect? We must all support the call for transparency and also trust in the Electoral Commission. Thank you. Uh, Fred Forsen says, on the EC and the NDC issue about the voters register, the issue is purely mind-boggling. And all the persons there must be open to more questioning and also give the citizens a good reason in increasing their trust in the electoral body. Thank you. Dr. Zato, I'll start off with you on this um, legal mining matter, just a couple of minutes on it, because we see the evidence. There's been a five-member ministerial committee, interministerial committee that has been established. But then, what next? Is this the kind of response that you're expecting? Uh, thank you very much, Alfred. And there's no Ghanaian with a sound mind who will see what is happening with this Galamse and be happy with it. No matter your politics, no matter what, when you see what is happening with Galamse, every Ghana will be, just be devastated about it. But here is the issue. Both the NDC and the MPP have blood on their hands when it comes to this galamsey. Both of them have, are entitled to and should get enough blame for what has happened for this galamsey mamis. And I think the prayer of both the NDC and the MPP is that this election we are going to have shouldn't be an, a single issue election. That Ghana shouldn't walk into the ballot box and just think about only galamsey and vote. Because if it becomes a single issue election this coming, the winner, and if it's just on Galamsey, the winner might be the CPP or the PNC. Because they have never had executive power. They have never had the resources 
of the state, and none of them has ever had a commander in chief who is supposed to prosecute this. Thing. So this issue is because I want to go back. Let's go back. The Galamse issue did not just start today. The Galamse issue did not just come today. In fact, if you look at it, it's, beget, it's getting sophisticated and complicated as time goes on. The equipment being used, the machinery being used. How did we allow it to fester at this level? It should be a collective national shame. And as a country, we all should be able to come together and say, enough is enough about Galamse. If you just take what happens uh, from, let's just say uh, from, 19, uh, from 2000, when J.A. Kufo was the president, the executive power, we can say, what did he do and how good did he do a job to prevent Galamse? If you take from 2012 to around 2006, uh, 2008 to around 2012, then when His Excellency Professor Mills, when he saw rest in peace, was president, what did he do and how effective did he do it? And then we can also ask the question, when from 2012 to 2016, His Excellency John Dramanohan was the president of Ghana, what did he do and how did, well did he do it? Okay. And then finally, we'll ask the question, now, now it, uh, from 2016 to now, how did uh, His Excellency uh, Nana Afuofo do, do and how did he do it? Right. Now, I've seen the argument is now becoming like, okay, we did it less than you did. When we were in power, it was less than you. Now, when we've come here, it has been more. That may be true because if you're looking at the figures, as we were saying, that the number of licensing is true. That's exciting. But that is usually what happens when you uh, make a policy or a law and you leave what we call policy window, you leave open holes. Sometimes you say it's a small window to continue. Before you realize, policy makers and especially politicians will drive elephants, will drive trucks through that small window. Okay. The question. Yeah. The question is that that is what has happened because we've left that small window open to now say, okay, let's do it small. My question is, why isn't that the law, whatever we have, why hasn't the law just been banned to say, let's outrightly ban this thing since it started? The law, the, 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 the point I ask, I'm asking is that this issue has affected all of us and affected us differently. And this issue will affect all of us going forward. The right. question is, are we going to outrightly ban Galamsey? For me, as I'm sitting here, I don't think that the thing, the best thing to do is that we have right. parliament, and I, I'm surprised that I'm happy that this parliament has learned how to do what it's called private member bills. Okay. I want to see a bill, and I hope they do it. If the MPs actually mean business, if both the NDC and the MPP uh, actually mean business, and if we are not just using this for the purposes of the elections, if the purpose is not just to name a shame and try to win political favor for the elections, if they actually mean it, we should be having a bill right now from, from Parliament saying that, look, let's just completely ban Galamse. Right. right. Because yeah. if we do that outrightly, because see, the question is that, what is going to happen after the elections? If we just use the election to, to do that, then we are going to make sure that it is going to happen again. Okay. Well, the, the factors that has made it worse now will right. continue. Let's get a private, even if it is a private members bill right now, that will show the seriousness of the political of the parties political class. into bank because it will yes. continue. Right. right. So, Jeffrey, quick one on this. And this ban private members motion and so on. Also be done going uh, forward. Uh, my, my, my submission is divided into three. Just mm -hmm. a brief submission on this point. We have, see, just, Alfred, we have just nine minutes. Mm -hmm. yes. Alfred, um, this increased speed of illegal mining that we are all outraged about, let's not kid ourselves, is an existential threat. It's a threat to our collective survival. And we must all be genuinely interested in solving the problem. On the starting point, is to place the blame where it lies. Mm -hmm. And that is why I will start by vehemently dismissing the argument that my good brother um, from the MPP has made, that the, the problem is NDC MPP. Please, you are totally wrong. Don't repeat that anywhere. Under the no, NDC... No, I think that... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 it's not hold on, Sammy. I mean, I've not told him to repeat anything. So don't tell me I should repeat it, what I've said. I'm saying I'm that what you said what? is wrong. Okay, if you want to repeat it, fine. No, what I've said is wrong. But I'm going to demonstrate what you said wrong. is false. Was there Galamse no under the NDC? No, no problem. Was there Galamse? Okay. No problem. There hold was. On. Hold on, hold on. You could right. say levels have changed, but there was Galamse oh, under the NDC. Okay. My there was Galamse when his Excellency oh, John Brahma was the commander in chief of the Ghana force. There was. You could talk about volumes. You could talk about numbers, but there was. That's a fact. Okay. Look, illegal mining has been with us since the days of Gold Coast. And the champion, there was a legal mining. And in Chroma, there was a legal mining. That phenomenon of illegal mining is not what is happening today. That phenomenon of illegal mining, where a few locals, young people who are in search of jobs, they pick, pick us, shovel, and they go and dig just to get some gold. They call it black. That is not the kind of galamsey that is going on. 
what is happening is a free for all illegal mining industry led by government officials and MPP apparatchiks. That has never happened in the history of Ghana. Under the NDC, forest reserves were no-go areas, red zones. You could not do mining in forest reserves. You have come to pass a new guideline to, to give the president the discretion to allow for mining in forest, forest reserves. Yeah. You cannot equalize. You don't have any classmates. Okay. Number two, under the NDC, we did not have a situation where over 500 seas excavators were stolen by government officials and NDC functionaries, like it happened under a core. We see and from Pong Okay. Under NDC, Adam Shrem, that drone pilot, has a picture of Rivan Cobra mm. in 2016, mm -hmm. and you can put it on the screen. I've given it to your producer as compared to 2018. Mm. And that Mahama, that Cobra was crystal clear. And the you, it is as brown as chocolate, you can't equalize. Again, you cannot equalize because today, wow. we know of your ministers, your DCs, your MCs, mm. who are mining in forest reserves. Some pine is one. Mm. Um, Akonta mm. mining, Wun to me, is another. Mm. Kajen Fua, we know all of them. Mm. And the NDC, mm. no minister, no MP, no DC, okay. no appointee was engaged in illegal mining. That is my first point. There is no basis for equalization. Put right. the problem okay. where it lies. Number right. two, number two, and I'll be very brief on this point. I am surprised that people are surprised that the Kufuado has scammed them on Galamse. I am rather surprised at those people who are surprised because it was clear right from the get go that the Kufuado was not interested in fighting Galamse. In 2016, he went to Obuase, I can share the tape with you, and said, President Mahama said, Motu Abamamia, Mebabe said Galamse. And no crack, 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 crack. He rather promised to promote Galamse. It was when he came into office and saw the media championing the fight against Galamsey that he went and made that lofty rhetoric, that speech about putting his presidency on the line. He never meant it. And I will conclude by saying this and by making this point very forcefully. In 30 seconds. Any recommendation on this Galamsey menace, which is not linked to the voting out of the MPP, is an exercise in futility. Because the MPP has had 2,807 days. 2,807 days to fight illegal mining. We've given them drones. We've given them soldiers. Operation Vanguard, Galam Stop, Operation Hot. We've given them billions of taxpayers' money to fight Galam C. Today, their scorecard is the brown, brownish, oh. yellowish, Pra River and Cobra Brim River and the threats to water supply in this country. So, you cannot expect that in the remaining 84 days we have to the 7th December election, anything meaningful can be done by okay. this government to fight Galamse. Right. They came to steal, to kill, and destroy. They Thank banned you. Galamse, including legal small-scale mining, for two years. And when the ban was in force, they used it as a ruse to mm -hmm. capture concessions belonging to legal small-scale miners. Mm -hmm. At the time the ban was in force, MMDCs were mining, according to Heji Alima, former minister for local well, government. Thank you. At the time, I'm landing, no, no, at the no, time the ban was enforced, Charles Bissou, the secretary wait, wait, to the Interministerial wait, wait, Committee Against done. Illegal Mining, was wait. collecting bribes from Chinese wait. to aid them to mine wait. illegally. Wait. So look, you can't trust them, all of them, from the president wait. Wait. to his vice to all their party apparatchiks. This okay. is a Galamse government, a Galamse party. So the solution is to vote them out in the next 84 days. Simple. Vote them out and Bring John Thank Mahama you and the NDC you made your to point. come and fix the mess. Professor and Dampo. if we don't fix it, uh, vote us out. Pro, that Dampo. is the solution. I want to give you the last bit. And, and I'm sorry for pro, taking time. Sammy, Sammy, very sorry. Don't, don't come here. The, 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 the issue is very no, 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 passionate no, no, issue. No, 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 no. Professor Jumbo, no, no, no. I want to give you the last bit. Your microphone is off. Your microphone is off. I'm sorry. Your microphone is off. I should give more time. Your microphone is off. Yeah. Sammy, Sammy, if you don't come here again, don't come here again. You come and so take, jump take over yes, the program. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think that um, Galamse, as has been said, is an existential threat. And um, for, for once, you have all manner of people coming together to make demands on the state. That uh, We feel that the state itself has failed in um, addressing the matter. And so there's been several demands. And uh, the various bodies that are 
springing up to make such demands. Some are interested. Uh, certain, uh, re uh, yesterday, I heard of the apostolic fathers of mm -hmm. the land. I was, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so, I'm sure Pentecostal fathers would also emerge, I'm sure, shortly to speak about some of these things. But the fact must be made, the point must be made, that um, uh, where we've gotten to, um, we are not going to allow the politicians to be doing the kinds of things that they do mm -hmm. in postponing solution to problems mm -hmm. like this. So quickly, they hurriedly said they've put together some interministerial committee to, to, to do what? To meet stakeholders who are agitating again. No, 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 no. It's not about interministerial committee. We are not honoring any invitation of any interministerial committee. The demand is simple. Declare state of emergency, place a moratorium on mining, whether legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. Let the water bodies regain their their territory um, their integrity and then once the water bodies begin to regain their integrity and they are clean we would all sit down and talk nobody is saying that if there is um, gold in the soil it shouldn't be mined but elsewhere there are sensible ways of mining such that you don't leave dangerous ecological footprints on the on the, on the environment Elsewhere, they mind such that we don't compromise the integrity of our water body. And so, I keep wondering, see, we destroy our water body so we don't have source, we wouldn't have um, source of water um, to drink. And then we get the gold. And what do we have? The gold that you get, you also, people will steal or smuggle it out. Mm -hmm. And so, if you destroy your environment, you destroy your bod water body, and then you can have gold to showcase for that, look, I destroyed my water body and I have gold. Maybe you may be consoled, but you destroy your water body and then the gold that you get is also so, smuggled out. Then afterwards, you go to IMF, in spite of the fact that you have gold, to go and beg. Is, are we stupid mm. or are we senseless? I've mm. always argued. See, the politics so, so the of stupidity, the... you see, the politics mm. of stupidity must give way to the politics of common sense. Thank you. It appears that our heads are not properly screwed on. And I'm wondering whether President Akufuado has seen this, the color of this water body. Water, when we were, crap. listen, when we were young, we were told that water was colorless. It was odorless. But look at the water body now. And so, so Politics of stupidity must give way to policies of common sense. And we are not honoring any invitation of any interministerial committee. It is bogus. It doesn't make sense. We are dying. We want action now. Okay. We are not going to be sitting down and more people will be dying before we talking, talking, talking. That right. bogus approach to resolving public, public dangers right. and challenges um, we'll, should we'll, become we'll, a thing of the past. Time. Thank you. Professor Ransford Jampo is a key member of the TUC and also president of the Utah Legon branch. 